Well, spending on digital infrastructure is still expanding despite a looming economic recession. Now, this includes spending on cloud storage, cybersecurity, and blockchain technology, which puts the digital infrastructure sector well on its way to becoming a multi-trillion dollar business by 2030. The question is, which funds or ETFs are best positioned to capitalize on this mega trend? Well, today's ETF battle is an audience requested matchup. Actually, it's a triple header between three digital infrastructure funds. Who wins the battle? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Season four is in full swing. And we're glad to have you with us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already joined ETF Guide. Also, if there's an ETF battle that you would like to see, send me your ETF tickers in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. We can do double, triple, and quadruple headers, so make it good. One more thing, to avoid sending us ETF matchups that we've already done, we try and eliminate redundancy, trying to be as efficient as possible. Be sure to check out our ETF Battles Season 4 playlist. Again, that's in the description section below, along with the links to our program judges and our program sponsor, Direction. Now, today's ETF contest was sent to us on our Twitter handle, at ETF Guide, by a ETF Battles fan and fanatic named Daniel Buck. He eats, sleeps, and invests in ETFs. And this particular matchup is a triple header between Byte from Roundhill, Server from Pacer, and VPN from Global X. And I got a feeling that this is going to be a good matchup. And by the way, all the ETFs featured in this matchup are what I call, or have what I call, vanity plate ticker symbols, which have direct references to the digital infrastructure landscape. Helping us to sort through the ETF mayhem is Cynthia Murphy with the ETF Think Tank and Shana Sissel with Banrian Capital. Judges, welcome back. Good to see you again. Great to be back. Hey, Ron. Thanks for having me. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. For mystery, that's where our judges can choose a single factor or multiple factors or Anything that they feel is crucial to today's contest, our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere, or they can offer split decisions. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick things off with the first category, cost. Shana, please get us started. All right, so uh, between Byte, Server, and VPN, uh, these are three funds that all have you know fairly um, elevated expense ratios at 76 basis points for Byte, 55 for Server, and 50 for VPN. Um, when I look at this, um, yes, VPN from Global X has the lowest expense ratio, but my winner in expense is actually Server, at 55 basis points, it actually has the most assets. So it's the most liquid and has the least amount of spread in its trade. So while it's slightly more expensive than VPN, the cost to trade it from a liquidity perspective is lower at only a three cent spread versus VPN, which has a 10 cent spread. And for me, that means that server is my winner. Thank you, Shana. That's a strong start. Cynthia, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Yeah, I agree 100%. If you're going to get in and out of this fund, uh, the five basis points you save on expense ratio with VPN, I don't think makes up for the cost of transacting in this fund. You know, what I love about this is just the server is a clear case of first to market advantage. I mean, the amount of assets it has relative to funds that are very similar to it is because it was the first in the game. It has $700 million in assets and the other ones don't come even close. So you know, just from an industry perspective, it's always interesting to see how there really is such a thing as that first market advantage. And our judges are bringing up some great points, especially not just focusing on the lowest expense ratio, but the total cost, to uh, including the trading cost, along with the expense ratio. So thank you, judges, for bringing that out. That takes us next to our exposure strategy category. And Cynthia, you're still up. So please break it down for us. 
Yeah, so the, the way to, that I think about these three funds is almost like in a sliding scale of server being your basically a REITs fund, um, VPN being your REITs with some kind of the, you know, more data side of the business, and then Byte being like almost no REITs and it's all communication services. So it's, if you're looking from a thematic exposure and you're looking for big data in the concept of your Comcasts of the world, Byte is the fund for you. Uh, if you're looking at the big data infrastructure as a, you know, buildings, doorknobs, and, and the actual hardware of that infrastructure, then server is your fund for you. So it's kind of a really interesting matchup because, you know, they're in the same category, but I think the exposures are very different. Uh, I think VPN tends to be kind of a lower vol option of the three because of that mix. Uh, it has that REITs drag that, you know, REITs have right now. Server is all REITs. Uh, but, you know, when I think of the big data theme, I kind of like Byte. Uh, it feels like it's a little more in the right territory, at least from a matching the vanity plate perspective, if you will. Uh, so... Again, it, it's a tough matchup. I, I'm i going to give it to Byte because I like it in terms of delivering on the theme. I like the fact that 30% of the fund is small cap, 30% is mid cap. Uh, so it has that kind of market cap diversification. And I like that it's, it has a, a multi-factor selection weighting scheme. They look for growth, they look for value, and they look for what they, can, they count they call soundness, which is basically financial health. So it's not just a market cap weighted fund. So I think it's a little bit more thoughtful approach that looks at uh, big data infrastructure beyond REITs. Shana, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of exposure strategy between these three funds? So uh, I don't know if I have a ton more to add to what Cynthia brought up. Um, the only place I kind of disagree is that I actually do think VPN and server are more similar than they are different. Um, I think both are extraordinarily concentrated with server having 18 holdings and um, VPN having 26. Uh, and when you actually look at the breakdown of the holdings in terms of like what isn't REITs, um, you know, it's like one or two holdings in the, in, the, in terms of VPN and its market cap is substantially larger basically because it owns NVIDIA. Uh, and uh, so that's really, you know, the major difference between the two, but there's substantial overlap in the holdings. Um, I do agree with everything Cynthia said about Byte being a more diversified, broader exposure to this particular, um, you know, trend in the market. So from that perspective, I agree. If you're looking for something where you can get some exposure, but also some income, the two funds with more REITs exposure have substantially better dividend yields. Uh, so there's there's that to consider. But I agree with everything uh, Cynthia mentioned. Not a whole lot to add. So which ETF is your preferred choice for this category? That's exposure strategy. I think that Byte is the best pure play exposure if you're looking for data infrastructure because it's not very narrow in that it's only REITs. Um, there are a number of different things to consider. It's the most diversified with over 40 holdings, but it's very small in terms of its assets. And so that gives me some pause. Um, but overall, in terms of exposure strategy, I would, I would choose Byte. That takes us next to performance. And this is where it really gets interesting. So Shana, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Which of these ETFs in terms of performance stands out? Uh, of these, uh, VPN has the strongest consistent performance. Uh, server is outperforming for the last month, but that's really the only period of time it outperforms. Um, both server and VPN outperform over all time periods versus Byte, uh, largely because I think the REIT aspect of them has something to do with that. And the broader exposure in the space uh, provides more beta and volatility because uh, some of those non-REIT plays are much more volatile. So I think that has a lot to do with it. But performance-wise, the clear winner, in my opinion, is VPN, which wins on every time period except for the one month. Cynthia, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance? Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I will just add that, you know, Byte is the baby of the three. So he has a, a shorter track record for us to, to see over time what the allocation difference does. I think it launched like end of 2021. 
Um, so, but otherwise, yeah, VPN uh, has done the best in pretty much every time frame that the three have coexisted. Baby Bite. Thank you very much, Cynthia. That takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they feel are pertinent to today's contest. So, uh, she, uh, Cynthia, you're up. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I'm going to actually go with uh, just sector allocation for the markets we're in. Um, I think in the in the case of an upside here, in the case of an upswing, I think I would prefer to be more in communication services than in real estate. Real estate is looking kind of risky right now. Um, so I like bite the way, for the way it's positioned for the market we're in. I would prefer that kind of risk going forward, uh, at least in the near term versus REITs. And, uh, and I like the fact that it's a little bit more diversified. I think Shana's point earlier that these portfolios, I mean, Byte has 40 holdings. The other ones have 18 and 20. It's just a reminder that when you get in this, the thematic space, I mean, concentration can get really, really, really concentrated. And uh, so we think of ETFs as diversified, you know, access points to, to market segments. But when you play in the thematics, you've got to watch out for that. You can be like really heavily concentrated in a few stocks and uh, be susceptible to, to sharp mark move, market moves. So, but anyway, that's a, that's a side point. So I'll, I'll go with Byte just for their allocation to communication services, which is one of the best performing sectors year to date. It has far outperformed the S&P 500 and real estate sector uh, in year to date and in the past year. So I think it's a better place to be right now. Great points. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Shana, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I'm not straying too far from how Cynthia kind of approached it, although I have a different winner. So when I look at this, I like VPN the most because I actually like that it has substantial read exposure in this space. Where I somewhat disagree with Cynthia is that while real estate headline risk um, is obviously something that a lot of people are talking about, there are certain types of real estate that have a level of stability that others don't because it's not as contingent on having tenants. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, you know, cell towers don't require a tenant. Uh, and, you know, data, uh, data rooms and servers do not require a tenant uh, in the way that, say, office space or other types of commercial real estate. This is not at all uh, dependent on a tenant uh, using the space. And if anything, we need, we need more real estate in this particular area. Uh, so, it's more likely than not that we'll see expansion and there's a lot more demand uh, for this type of real estate uh, out there than there is not, uh, which is the complete opposite to the you know headline real estate stuff that we're hearing right now. Um, I actually like VPN for a couple of reasons. I like that it has a, a very attractive dividend yield at about uh, uh, two and a half percent. Um, it does have the most consistent performance. And I think that's because it has that foundational aspect of that low volatility real estate, but it has a little bit of juice in the fact that it holds some of the uh, more uh, aggressive growth types of names like NVIDIA. Um, and while Cynthia is absolutely correct, communication services has done well year to date, Byte still hasn't outperformed. So um, while I do like the exposures, and communication services have outperformed the broader S&P, um, it's not actually showing up in the performance. So for me, VPN kind of stands out um, as the opportunity to get a little bit of exposure to that high growth, uh, high potential for excess returns, uh, but with the stability of the real estate to kind of um, minimize the volatility of your overall experience when you invest. Well, my scorecard looks like a Cy Twombly painting. How will this ETF battle go down? Well, let's give our judges one final chance to weigh in with their overall winner, Shana, give it to us. So this is really tough for me because I'm kind of torn between VPN and Byte. Um, you know, Byte has a higher expense ratio, but it's easier to trade. It's more diversified. You have, you know, a, a true global footprint where you have, you know, a U.S. and a global exposure and it's pretty even. Uh, you have, you know, communication services, you have the technology play, you have the REIT play. So it's a much more diversified uh, type of exposure to the space. 
But in the end, I have to give it to VPN for its consistency, its ability to provide you with a little bit of yield, some stability with REITs, but also a little bit of juice with the exposure it has in the you know more tech-oriented, higher growth names. And, and at, at the end of the day, it shows up in performance. And when you look at it, it's going to have three years of uh, history in October. It's outperformed over all time periods. So for me, VPN is the winner here. Cynthia, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner. Please give it to us. Yeah, it's funny because listening to Shane, I really helped me actually put in perspective. I was struggling with the same split decision. I think SRVR is our clear not winner in this category. Uh, the other two, it's really tough because on one side, there's no, nothing to argue there. VPN it's almost like this middle of the road play that has delivered um, versus Byte. And Global X knows the thematic space. They're kind of like a pioneer in the space. They're known for this stuff. You know, on the other side, you know, Byte from Round Hill, it really is, has that a little bit of a next gen type of way to slice and dice themes. I think it's an interesting, the company has an interesting approach to it. I like Byte for what, in my view, would be a purer way to access the theme. So, but then it becomes a philosophical discussion. You know, are you choosing the best investment or are you choosing the ETF that you think is doing the best job in delivering on the theme it's setting out to deliver? So, you know, if I'm going to be honest, it would be a split decision. Uh, but from from a thematic perspective, I like a Byte story a little bit better and how it does it. Uh, but you can't argue that VPN has performed better and it's more in that middle of the road aspect. So it's a tough one, Ron. I think you're going to have to to break this one. All right. Well, uh, the judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, this is going to be a split decision between Byte and VPN. And yes, it was a struggle. I guess the one thing I learned from today's battle is that uh, these ETFs have one thing in common. And it's that they're different. And the fact is, we've got VPN, which, as Shana pointed out, that was her choice, has more of a hybrid approach. It's got that real estate exposure to uh, the the places that keep all of this computer equipment, you know, the servers and all that other stuff. It's also gotten a 2.5% dividend yield. Uh, so you can collect that dividend uh, while you're waiting for uh, the other holdings within VPN to go up, but also she liked it too for its great historical performance. It's beaten all the other ETFs, at least on a historical basis. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. It was also her choice for her mystery battle category. And it, it as our judges pointed out, um, it only has 20 holdings. All of these ETFs are very concentrated, but VPN is definitely uh, got one of the smaller portfolios of all of these ETFs. Cynthia's choice was Byte, B-Y-T-E from Round Hill. She liked its multi-cap approach. It's got some mid-caps and small caps in the mix. It's also a more diversified portfolio with 40 holdings. And she likes the fact that it's really a high-octane play on the digital infrastructure. It's not really seeking to invest in real estate or other things that um, are sort of semi-related, but it's focused dead center on this particular theme. So she liked that. And our judges raised some great points. And, you know, the fact that there's some differences in opinion, I think that's healthy and it's good. And hopefully you've enjoyed today's program as I have. Thank you again, Cynthia and Shanna, for your timely insight with today's digital infrastructure ETF showdown. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, Ron. Always a pleasure to be here. Always love being on with Cynthia. Well, keep up the good work, judges, and be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to both of our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.